So what do we need to start thinking about if we're going to try to figure out if a chemical reaction is spontaneous or not? Okay. It turns out that enthalpy plays a big uh, role in this. Okay, so what was enthalpy? Measure of disorder? No, you're, I'll catch up to you. You're ahead of me. That's the other one. Yep. We'll talk about that one next. Okay, so enthalpy, H, delta H, we're usually talking about delta H, that was the heat of the reaction, so how much uh, energy is being uh, either released or absorbed, remember that. That goes back to where is that energy coming from. If it's an exothermic reaction, it's coming from the chemical bonds, right? Chemical bonds are going from high potential energy to low potential energy. That's really you know, where the enthalpy, that change in energy is coming. So for exothermic reactions, Exothermic reactions. What's the sign of my delta H if it's exothermic? Negative. negative. So delta H is negative. Exothermic reactions tend to be spontaneous. That, of course, is because you're going, basically, you're going downhill. So if we do a potential energy diagram for an exothermic reaction, potential energy as a function of reaction progress, your reactants are higher potential energy than our products, right? And so we're going downhill. And that's what nature tends to do. Going from high potential energy, less stable, to lower potential energy, more stable. R's reactants. R's reactants, P would be the products. Of course, you got to get over that activation energy, but you know these tend to be spontaneous. Endothermic. What did endothermic reactions mean? Or just what? What did they mean? Energy is being put in. They're absorbing energy, right? And so because they need energy, they're absorbing that energy, they tend to be non-spontaneous. What's my sign for delta H for endothermic reactions? Greater than zero, positive, good. So they tend to be non-spontaneous. And that's basically because of the fact that, again, you have to put energy in. And so the, what a non-spontaneous reaction was, it required external energy. And so that tends to be the case for endothermic reactions, where we're starting out at lower potential energy, we're going up to higher potential energy. So these reactions are going uphill. You have to put energy to get up that hill. So we know when we talked about energy, the ball rolls down the hill. Can we put the ball back up the hill? Yeah, but we got to push it up. We got to put a sh put energy into it. The ball's not going to spontaneously roll up the hill. That'd be weird. But we need energy for that. So I mean, we could fool some people for a while. All right. So that's the story for enthalpy. Enthalpy is the uh, uh, major force in determining spontaneity, okay, whether or not something's spontaneous or not. But, and here's a big but, there's, uh, there's one word, actually it's one word but written twice, that's kind of troublesome. Tend. tend. That means not always. If that word wasn't there, if that ten wasn't there, that'd be the end of this chapter. And, boop, move it on. We'd be done. We wouldn't have anything else to talk about. Okay, but there are other things uh, that can affect whether or not a uh, chemical reaction is spontaneous. 
And I keep on saying chemical reaction and I need to correct myself because the same story is true for physical processes. Okay, physical processes are either spontaneous or non-spontaneous.